So we want to calculate this integral. And the trick here, start off by um, just calling this integral i, and then squaring both sides. So i squared equals 1 over 2 pi. And squaring this here just means to multiply it by itself. So rather than writing a square, I'll just be more explicit and write the integral twice. Minus infinity to infinity e minus a half x squared dx and then integral again minus infinity to infinity e minus a half and the x here is what's known as a dummy variable it doesn't matter what letter we use i could switch it to y which i'll do and it's still the same thing so that's still the same integral there's no difference in it um and this is now possible to combine into one integral known as a double integral. So double integral and minus infinity to infinity and minus infinity to infinity, that's the or squared plane. E minus a half x squared minus a half y squared dx dy. So that will be i squared equal to 1 over 2 pi integral r squared e power minus a half x squared plus y squared dx dy. Now we can use a substitution here. We can say let x equals r cos theta and y equals r sine theta. In other words, we use polar coordinates. So just continuing up here on the right, we'll get i squared equals 1 over 2 pi integral over the whole plane r squared e minus a half. And I hope you can see here x squared plus y squared would just be r squared in polar coordinate system r squared. And then dx dy, that has to get transformed into Jacobian for the system, uh, the transformation. And this is a standard coordinate system, polar system. So you should know what the Jacobian is when you go from Cartesian to polar. It's just the radius. So that's 1 over 2 pi integrate over r squared e minus a half r squared r. Uh, the or d theta. Okay, nearly there. 1 over 2 pi. Now, um, I guess I could integrate with respect to the theta first. The theta goes from 0 around 2 pi and the radius goes from 0 to infinity so the radius um, goes from let's actually be more explicit here the theta goes from 0 to 2 pi and the radius goes from 0 to infinity so if we integrate with respect to theta we'll just get theta e minus a half r squared r and then we have to put in the limits 0 to 2 pi for the or. So obviously when you put 0 in it's 0. So it's just the 2 pi that really matters. So this would be 1 over 2 pi 0 to infinity 2 pi e minus a half or squared the or. And the 2 pi's cancel out, which is nice. So now we just have i squared equals the integral from 0 to infinity of this expression here. So perhaps you can see we can almost, oh sorry I left out the or, apologies. Maybe I'll stick it in the front. Um, perhaps you can see that this here we can almost have a guess at what must have been differentiated to get this because usually when you have an e with a power 
uh, to differentiate it, it's just the derivative of the power that comes down. So with a little bit of thought, we can figure out that this here must have been the derivative of, let's see, if you had e minus a half r squared, the derivative of this is minus r, um, but it's not minus r in front, it's r, so perhaps we should put a minus here. And when we differentiate this, we will get this expression here, which is good. So now these cancel and it becomes the integral from zero to infinity. Uh, the minus can come out. D e power minus a half or squared. So this then becomes just minus e power minus a half or squared zero to infinity. So that will be minus e power minus a half or squared minus e power zero, which is one. But the or goes to infinity. So that first piece here will vanish with or going to infinity. Uh, that first piece will vanish, so it becomes zero because e to the power of minus infinity is zero. So you'll just be left with minus minus e zero, which equals one. And because i squared equals one, it means therefore the i is one. Okay.